So we are going to do the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus x squared times the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. Now this is an indeterminate form limit. On the inside of this natural log, as x approaches infinity, we're going to get the natural log of 1, which is 0. So we have 0 times infinity already. That means we're going to have to do some more work to figure out what this limit looks like. We also have to notice that we can't split this limit up into the sum of its two elements because the limit as x approaches infinity of x is infinity. So we can't split that up because that limit doesn't exist. We have to consider it as a whole to see whether it converges to a finite value. In that case, one thing that we could try to do is put it all inside of one giant fraction with a numerator and a denominator and try to do L'Hopital's rule. But this expression doesn't look like asking for a L'Hopital's rule because it's not really in the form of a fraction that we could easily differentiate. One alternative is to start by looking at this natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. Because one method that we know to evaluate those kinds of expressions is using a Taylor series. Now the Taylor series centered at 0 for the natural log of 1 plus some input u. That's going to equal u minus u squared over 2 plus u cubed over 3 minus u to the fourth over 4 and so on. And this is defined for the absolute value of u being less than 1. So if we're plugging in 1 plus 1 over x on the inside, we have that the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x equals, well everywhere we see a u, we just put 1 over x instead. So 1 over x minus 1 over x squared over 2 plus 1 over x cubed over 3 and so on. And this is going to be defined for the absolute value of 1 over x is less than 1. The first thing we have to consider is does our input fit inside the radius of convergence? Well remember that we're taking the limit as x approaches infinity and as x approaches infinity 1 over x is going to go to 0. 0 is definitely less than 1, so we are inside of our radius of convergence, which means we're allowed to use this Taylor series expansion. Let's see what happens when we plug that in to the expression that we have here. So our initial expression here is going to equal the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus x squared times this Taylor series expansion. On the inside here, we can multiply x squared through each of these terms to see what our result actually is. We get the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus x squared times 1 over x is going to be x. And then we have minus a minus becomes plus x squared times 1 over x squared is going to be 1. So we have just a 1 half. After that, we'll subtract x squared over x cubed is going to be 1 over x. So that's our next term, and then we keep adding terms. Now notice, first of all, we have x minus x in the front. Those two are going to cancel out. But we have to consider the rest of our terms because a Taylor series has an infinite number of them. The question is, are those terms going to affect our final answer? Well, remember that as we do a Taylor series going up through these powers, the exponent is going to keep increasing for every new term that we add. So we have 1 over x, 1 over x squared, 1 over x cubed, and so on. By the time we get to our third term, we already have an x in the denominator. And as x approaches infinity, 1 over x is going to approach 0, so it's not going to matter. As we add another term, all that's going to happen is this x in the denominator is going to get raised to higher and higher powers. Next we'll have 1 over x squared, 1 over x cubed, and so on. So those all are going to end up going to 0 as we take x approaching infinity. So really, this part equals 0, all the other terms equal 0, there's only one part left, and that is 1 half. So our final answer is just that, 1 half. So the way that we got here was by looking at our limit and realizing that L'Hopital's rule would not be that nice for differentiation. So instead, we can look at the natural log 
Taylor series. And once we plug in that natural log Taylor series and expand everything out, turns out that almost everything goes to zero. The only thing that's left is this constant term of one half. And so that is our final answer.